Hey friends, it's Christy. Are you excited about painting with me today? I hope you are. So, what do you do when your precious fresh flowers are starting to die? You make more art with them. So today we're gonna learn how to take almost dying flowers and turn them into a really cool three-dimensional composition. You're gonna have a blast. My name is Christy Rice. I'm obsessed with watercolor. And on this channel, I teach you how to make art for joy's sake. Do you want to paint with me? Well, come on, let's go. So you're probably wondering, wait, wait, wait a minute, Christy Rice, well, what are you talking about? You're gonna use dead flowers to paint with? Not quite, we're gonna use flowers that are at their peak, they're about to go downhill. We're going to pull them apart, add in painted paper scraps, and actually assemble all of that on the flat page and turn it into a crazy beautiful composition. Now, if you're already liking what you're hearing, please give that like button a hit because that would make me so happy, but let's do this. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have a decent sized page of watercolor paper. I'm using nine by 12 inches, and then of course some scrap, and your petals. So pull apart a flower of your choice. I'm using peonies. This was filmed during peony season. So yeah, I mean, how could I resist? Literally pull apart different pieces, leaves, petals, some of the stamens, you can use it all. I also love to have a dry, clean paintbrush on hand to wipe away debris. I'm using Mission Gold watercolors this time, but you use what you have. Just spray them down before you get started. Okay, so remember, this is a combination of painting right on the page, using live petals, leaves, and whatnot, in addition to painted paper scraps. So it's almost like you're sculpting a composition. I always start with the center of the flower. So just some yellow, bouncing around on the page. I am using my dagger brush, by the way, the quarter inch dagger, and I'm using just the tip of it and just kind of creating little swirly bouncy marks to create this kind of ruffly center right on my main paper. All right, let's zoom in here so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm going in with a clean brush loaded with my favorite pink, and just with the tip of that dagger and some pressure, I created a leaf. I rinsed my brush now and I'm adding in just some wet to that area and letting that pink blend and bleed all around to finish off that petal. And I'm basically gonna be repeating that kind of technique all around the center of this flower and intermingling that by adding in some fresh petals and paper petals. Now, always have a paper towel on hand if you feel like you got too juicy with your paint so you can blot and clean and all the things. So here we go with some of those fresh petals. Just lay some down. The, the, all of the mindset stuff that I teach you for painting like quote normally applies here 100%. Don't overthink things too much. Grab a couple petals, throw them down. You can always move them. Then start painting more petals around those petals. I'm using a different pink now. It's not as bright. It's a little more creamy and opaque. So mix up the pigments that you're using. Don't always feel like you have to use the same pink all the way around because uh, Mother Nature doesn't use the same pink. So why should you? and literally just keep building. Painting on the flat page, adding in live petals. That's really the name of this game. Not that it's a game, but you know what I mean. This is so cool, right? I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, oh my goodness, this is wicked cool. Now, yes, I did just place a fresh petal right down in the middle of wet watercolor. And you know what? It's okay. Now I'm feeling the need right away to start adding some leaves because that's just how I work. Like there's a certain point in all of my paintings where I'm like, yep, it's time for leaves. It's got to happen. Same thing applies, wet on dry, adding one color green and then very quickly going in wet on wet with another green to keep things really dynamic and start to build that depth and interest right from the get go. Now I'm still zoomed in and you're not seeing all of the strokes that I'm making. I will zoom out soon, but I wanted you to get a real good close up idea of exactly what it is I'm doing. But here we go. I've got some leaves in. I've got a couple painted petals and a couple 
actual flower petals. And you can start to see what I'm actually doing here. All right, now let's get into this scrap paper. So there's a couple of ways you can do this here. You can literally pull out old scraps, old paintings. That's right, like cut up old paintings to turn into petals and leaves. You can get some really cool results if you do that because obviously your old paintings might not necessarily be a perfect match for this pink flower or the green leaf. So you can really have some fun. Or you can do what I'm doing here, which is cut out the shape of a petal from a fresh piece of paper, paint it pink, and then I usually sculpt it a little bit around my brush so it has a nice curve to it, and then place it like you would the real petal. And you can see, I'm just like zhuzhing and folding and bending and sculpting. And look at that, look at that. There's that moment when I create these compositions, because I've been doing these for years. There's always that moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, did I just like improve upon nature? And I know that kind of sounds boastful. I don't mean it to, but I feel like with this exercise, you do feel like you're creating your own little imaginary world and it's very empowering. Okay, let's keep going. I'm gonna paint another petal and I'm going right onto that scrap, wet on dry. You are gonna get messy, just be okay with it. You're, you don't have to be as messy as I am. I'm pretty messy, but that's just how I am. Look at that, I just added that really light creamy pink and in the middle of all of that bright pink. And look, even a little bit of purple, I'm doing shadows right onto that scrap. And you bet your butt, am I gonna wait for it to dry? Nope. I'm gonna place it right away. I know some of you are watching this thinking like anxiety through the roof. If this process that I'm showing you doesn't work for you, makes you nervous, figure out what does. Maybe it means you cut all of your petal shapes, you paint them all, you let them dry, and then you place them. Do it however you feel most comfortable with. You don't have to do this process exactly the way I do, because I want this to be a restful experience for you, not a stressful one. Okay, I added a real leaf, and now I'm going right beside and painting a little bit of a whatever leaf. I don't know what to call it, a shadow leaf, a little bit of detail. You just do you at this point. This is a layering of your whims, a layering of your whims. I feel like I need a t-shirt that says that, because literally there, there are no rules here. Try to impose some rules on yourself here and you're gonna have a hard time because you're making up something that absolutely 100% doesn't exist. You're creating a composition that if you described it to most people, they'd be like, wait, what? What are you doing? So you owe no one nothing. You are creating something that is yours and yours alone. And so just soak it up, friends. Soak it up and enjoy this little world that you are diving into right now. All right, enough with me getting all poetic. Let's keep going. So layering it, I feel like I want more scraps and I'm gonna make a bigger piece here. Maybe I'll turn this into a leaf. Let's see what happens. Yeah, no, I wanna do a big, oh, did you see what I did there? I put down some color and then I swooped right over it with some paper towels for some texture. And then I'm gonna curl it around again bend and look at that. I am getting all up in there with that wet paint and I'm okay with it. Remember as you work, you can move things, you can change things. A pair of tweezers wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if you are a little bit more meticulous and really like to get into the details, especially if you are cutting smaller pieces than I am. Tweezers will be your friend. And if you're wondering right now, you're like, are you gluing any of this down? No friend, I am not. And I feel like that's part of the challenge. I've actually done these outside with the wind and all the things. Talk about fun. Now, as I get into the composition, I do start to think about detail. You know those details that I love to add with the very tip of my dagger like this. Very thin, wispy, little veins start adding it because that is going to give you dimension and a sense of polish very quickly. I don't ever spend more than like a full hour on these compositions and I've done some pretty complex ones. I tend to move through them pretty quickly, not in a sloppy way, but quickly. 
And then look, I'm starting to add some dimension into the center and you can see this flower taking its full shape right before your eyes. Now, I've done this before on this channel. So go ahead and check out those other videos here where I kind of create the same type of project but with totally different flowers. Okay, now it is time for a leaf. It is time for a big old beautiful green peony leaf. And yes, I had some paint on that brush and yes, it was pink and so what? Look at how it's mingling with that green. It's so pretty. And again, just want to point out that my freedom, what I call freedom, may stress some of you out. So don't feel like you have to push yourself to be as free and um, as messy as I am sometimes. You execute this the way that you feel comfortable with. Now, usually at this point in the composition, I'm getting into more of the fine details. So we'll zoom in here and show you. I'm going into some of these pieces that I've already laid down. And yes, they're going to continue to move as you work. Expect that. Expect that. And it's okay. You can always just move them right back into place. And you know what? You're likely going to get some smudges in places you hadn't planned because you've got a lot of creative watercolor plates in the air here, friends. I'm adding in a few buds, simple circles, wet on dry, two different greens, and then very quickly adding in, I'm using like an opera pink, opera rose, whatever bright pink you have will work and just let it bleed, bleed, mingle, mingle. Mm, look, look, looky Lou at that. Oh my gosh, I'm getting really cheesy now. Now remember, what are you supposed to be doing as we're painting here? If you watched my last video, how to be kind to yourself, you should have already told yourself something really nice about your painting here at least three times now. Okay, so do that if you haven't already. I really hope you're liking this so far. And I hope if you are liking it, you're willing to give me a little thumbs up there at the bottom of the screen. And also give me a subscribe if you haven't already because I post every Tuesday, every Saturday, and I really don't want you to miss any of it. We're heading on towards the end here. And this is where you start to just talk to yourself and think, out loud or to yourself, do I wanna add more? How many more petal leaves do I want? Do I wanna bring in more real petals? Do I need actual berries? Do I have a berry out in my backyard that I can pick? Like literally I'm letting you step inside my mind because these are the things I ask myself. And yes, there have been times where I've been creating a composition like this and I will get up, go outside, pick something from the garden just to add to it because I can and why not? I don't know, can you tell how excited I am to teach this? I just love these compositions. They make me feel like I'm alive. And I really, really hope they do the same for you. Now, don't forget, head into the comments, either as you're watching this the first time or maybe you're re-watching and you have questions as you're painting along with me. I want you to head into comments because I respond to every single comment. So if you have a question, a frustration, a point that you've gotten to that you just don't know what to do next, comments are where it's at. I will find you there and I am here to help you. This is another way to add detail. You don't have to add those thin details while everything is still resting on your flat surface. Pick up those leaves and paint them in and then replace them. Adding in a few more fresh petals. Now, if you're catching this video as a first time viewer here and you're like, wait, 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 how do I know what you're doing with these painting techniques? Like, I don't understand. Here's a video that you can go to that will give you a little bit more of the basics in terms of how to use this dagger brush and the basics of watercolor technique overall. And then of course you can come back here and have at it and have a blast. Okay, yes, I did just grab a cluster of those stamens and I am sprinkling them into the middle of my flower. And holy moly, guacamole, isn't that cool? Now, some petals, think about them being a lot more sheer in terms of color, a lot less pigment on them, like that one. Not every petal has to be super saturated and soaking in bright paint. All right, friends, so when you feel like you're done here, what I want you to do is take that watercolor paper that you've been painting on the whole time, take it outside, make sure it's not too windy or take it next to a really nicely northern facing, I think it's northern facing window and snap a photo. You're gonna snap it on your phone from the top. So basically you want your phone parallel with 
the page and take a bunch of photos. Take one all the way up, take some super close at different angles and just take as many photos as you feel you need to capture the crazy beauty that you just created. And then you have all those photos to use. All right, friends, this is it. We are wrapping up for the day. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I can't wait to hear what you think in the comments. And honestly, I'm even more excited about what you're gonna create after watching this video. Thank you so much for painting with me and happy, happy, happy painting, friends.